Divine Truth Documentary Jesus, Mary and Others provide information to people or organizations that produce documentaries. In this video, Thomas Lita interviews Tristan Miller while staying at Thomas' accommodation. Filmed on the 13th of August 2013 in Malulaba, Queensland, Australia. Can you tell me the first, or can you tell me how it was um, when uh, your father t told you he was Jesus? And this one I, I know. Um, he first told me, um, uh, we were watching a movie down at a, a mall down in Adelaide. Uh, we were having lunch at Subway just before the movie, or the start, I can't remember, which has been so many years now. Um, he told me that he's, that he's uh, Jesus. Um, that he's having memories of his life. And he didn't really go much further than that at that time. Um, and I remember just, I just remember it being almost funny. Um, not, not condescending wise, but like I was having a lot of fun with it. I was very happy that day. And uh, for me, it's a, a big thing because um, I used to be in religion where Jesus was, was the big priority, like doing what Jesus was doing. Um, Holding yourself around what, what, like what, what was happening in the Bible for Jesus and trying to be like Jesus. So for me, it was always funny because here's the guy that's taking me to see it, see me, see it, and, and like I think it was an MA movie or M movie, and uh, and uh, I've had mum because they had broken up by this time. Um, I've had mum say, "Oh, he's taking you to see bad movies. You shouldn't go see him." <laughs> see those movies and uh, it was just the whole thing of what would Jesus do? Oh, Jesus would go see The Matrix even though apparently mum doesn't like it. So it was, it was, I had a lot of good fun and a lot of good laughs about it. Um, I, I wasn't too nonplussed about it. I wasn't worried. Um, I knew dad. Um, he's always been a logical and uh, uh, someone I can trust. And uh, if you felt that he was uh, Jesus, I, I didn't have to believe it. I didn't feel like he was expecting anything of me. And he said that outright, like, I don't expect anything. I said, yeah, um, until you can prove it to me, there's, um, there's not much chance I'm going to believe it, Dad. But um, yeah, I'd like to hear how you came to that sooner or later. Probably not right now because we're watching a movie, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I can't remember how old I was. I think it was like 20, 21. Um, so it was a few years back now. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't something scary or anything. Um, I, I didn't I didn't know the backstory of why he felt that way yet, and uh, we talked um, we talked a bit more about that afterwards because um, I was living in a, in a place with my brother at one of dad's houses at the time, and we'd often go see him. So um, hearing about um, God and and divine, and divine love and how to receive it and uh, like how to process and how to, how to feel emotional and, and to let yourself feel emotional, all that stuff came later. Um, it's just telling us about things that he'd learned about, like the memories he had about the universe and all that kind of stuff. And um, it was pretty fun. Like, I, I learned a lot just uh, sitting on this lounge room couch, me and my brother talking. <laughs> and <clears throat> so how did it make you feel when you actually, when he did tell you the experiences that he had in the first century? Um, I didn't ask that till much later. Um, at the time, from the first time he told me, he was actually going through a lot of emotion himself. So for him, he was he was crying and, um, and uh, processing, I suppose I'm gonna have to explain it sooner or later. Uh, he was trying to process through a lot of grief, sadness, um, some of the, the memories of torture that he had some of the fears he had of, of, of what's going to happen if he says he's Jesus. He was really scared about that. So he was process He was in bed crying, screaming, um, shaking um, for a lot, for a, uh, would be up to about six months, almost all day, going through that, that kind of thing. And so um, he'd come out and have something to eat and whenever, we came, whenever he'd, he'd talk to us, if he was feeling up for it, um, but we were just letting him just go through whatever he needed to go at the time. I wasn't really scared of about that. Um, what do you think was actually happening to him? Did you, at that stage, did you actually believe um, that he was going through real grief? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I know a lot of what my dad and my dad was like when he was with us. 
when we were all back at, when I was younger in a family group with him, mum, me, and, and me and my brother. And um, I know that even, even if he wasn't not Jesus, like there was a lot of emotion that, that he never let himself feel. And um, it was, I, I was never worried about it. I always felt like if he felt like he was safe, then just let him go for it. And uh, in the end, like, that's what, what I did. There were times, obviously, like, hearing how loud he could get, I got a bit scared. And those are the times when Dad would ask me, look, you're getting a bit scared, and like, you might want to leave and come back when, when things are done. And always after he, afterwards, he'd be brighter, happier. He'd learnt something about himself that he'd always be willing to tell me and my brother about. Um, he's al- always came out of it feeling better. Like, it was, always felt closer to him afterwards. Um, not for anything at the time I wasn't I wasn't processing myself at the time so for me I wasn't changing much I was just um, just seeing my dad change pretty fast so did did he explain the type of thing that it was processing at the time or? yeah he explained that uh, um, basically like um, people like to hold in what they feel and the more you hold it in um, I can't even explain it myself. Um, basically, um, if you hold in your hold on to your emotions and hold them in, they don't actually go anywhere. They stagnate inside you. Um, it's only until you let yourself feel them that um, that they actually can go away. And you'll see this a lot with a lot of different people where they'll start crying at them. People who hold on to the emotions for a long time. This is me when I was back when I was eighteen, trying to hold on to my emotions for a long time. And I'd just start crying out of nowhere. I didn't know what it was about, or why, or, or what was going on. And then, um, and then afterwards, I'd feel great. Um, and I, I know a lot of people that, that do that kind of thing where they, um, they don't know why they're crying because they don't really want to know. Or they don't know why they feel so angry all the time. Yeah. Or they don't know why they're so afraid. But they don't feel it. They just try and get through their life one one bit at a time and um actually allowing the emotion out as it happens so if you're afraid letting whatever your expression of what your fear is out as it happens actually get can actually get a the root of the source you don't actually have to be afraid of the thing ever again same thing with grief you don't actually have to hold on to the grief and be sad about that thing ever again you can let that go if you want to and it's all about your, your will, like it's all about what you want to do, and um, and I could see that dad at the time wanting to let go of a lot of things that that were keeping him the way he the way he didn't want to be like. Um, same thing for myself, like um, hold, don't, he didn't want to be uh, didn't want to be uh, afraid of of saying that he's Jesus if that's the way he who he felt he was. He didn't want to feel that way. So he's got to want to let himself feel that as it was happening. Let himself feel that fear. And it wasn't pretty. <laughs> um, when I, uh, when I was press- later on in my life, when I was processing, processing my own emotion, it's not pretty, it's loud. Um, when you are just letting whatever emotion is out at the time, not at anyone, but just in your own space, it can get loud and it can get very unpretty. And um, sometimes... Like you're crying and mucus is coming out and you're slobbering and, and you don't know what's going on except the fact that you feel sad and you're just letting it out. And um, afterwards, it's amazing because everything changes, but it all, it all depends on how you go. So what have you had to process? Why have you had to process? And um, For me, I can't remember things. The person I was when, um, when I was 18 to 20 compared to now is totally different. Um, I was a person who... Um, was very, very. Sh- uh, how can I say this? I was both sh- shy and flirty at the same time. Um, I wanted people to very much care about who I was, um, and I was very sad about myself all the time. I, I never, I, I, when I was about eighteen, I, was, I had depression, or I was diagnosed with depression, um, and. Uh, a very much a shut down person, not someone who let himself out very much at all. Um, and I wanted to change, I always wanted to change that. And I tried, I tried different things to do that. 
Um, when I started actually not getting to know like the stuff that Dad was teaching, like getting closer to God and, and changing in your soul, I really f- like that clicked with me straight away. I feel like that that's the way to go. And um, and I went kind of whole hog with it for a while. I just um, when I felt sad, I just let myself cry. I, pr- I prayed a lot, and I still do. Um, and it got to some points in my life where I just prayed and some grief would just come out. And afterwards, I'd feel brighter. I'd be able to connect with people. I'd be able to talk to anyone I wanted to. Um, I used to have this big fear of strangers. And now I can meet a new person. Come, they can come into my place and stay the night and I'm not worried in the slightest. Um, I used to have lots of ex- expectations of everyone around me. I don't know what a process to get rid of that, but I have very few expectations of people now. Um, if something happens, it happens. Um, very little fear or anger comes up, uh, and if it does, I try and let myself process through it. If I, can, if I'm feel I'm up for it, um, there was a point in my life where I was doing far better processing than I am at the moment. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm a bit stuck, but. Um, that's mostly because of the stuff that's just happened lately and um, I'm a bit afraid of um, processing through some anger unfortunately and what is that? Uh, well the problem I'm having at the moment is that I attract a lot of condescending treatment um, I look younger than I actually am um, I sometimes act very childlike so I do a lot of skipping and jumping and just acting like a like a not like a fool that's drunk or anything, but someone who is very just wants the curious about everything. Um, the problem is I attract a lot of um, a lot of negative. What's the word? Um, people treating me like I'm not really worth much, and that just that just digs in with my own my own emotions about and my own worth still at the moment. The problem is um, I'm not actually standing up for myself. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm kind of backing down and trying to make sure everyone around me is happy before I actually go, no, how you're treating me is actually bad and you, and you need to stop. Um, and the problem at, at the moment is I'm actually quite still angry about the treatment and because I'm scared of actually getting angry, I hide. I'd rather, I can, I'd rather hide for days, play video games, watch TV, like, watch DVDs or something like that and keep away from everyone until that that frustration goes away rather than just processing it which would be so much better <laughs> um, letting, letting out of emotions for me um, it, feels, it feels much better than holding on to them these days um, letting, letting out grief and fear uh, I've, like I said I've yet to go through my anger properly but I'm pretty sure that once I let it out I feel like what the, the, what was the whole point of holding on to it? Does that make sense? I'd be going, I'd be thinking, well, there was no point to that. That was like <laughs> that was like months of my life going down the drain. <laughs> um, but everything, uh, once once I get through an emotion, once I've let all of it out and uh, let myself connect to God, usually it's from that point onwards that situation never happens again. Um, that thing never comes up again. That that always feels good for me. Even if, if even if someone else does do something around me that, that's similar, I, I don't, it doesn't bother, bug me anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's so many things about my life that have changed that I don't, don't remember. I had, I had no job. Um, I was living very penniless. I was not attracting any kind of work. Um, there was a large portion of my life where I, uh, large portion, there was like a few, that was like a few months. Um, there, there's a portion of my life where, um, where I actually left uh, the safe haven of, of, cause I was living with dad or one of my dad's places and just went out on my own trying to find, trying to find some way, some way of looking after myself. Um, there was a large portion where I didn't even know if I had enough for the next week of rent or or food or I stayed in uh, like shared homes with different people um, and I was crying most nights about feeling pretty uh, pretty pathetic I remember feeling pretty pathetic 
And um, these days, like, I, that's just not in me anymore. Um, I have, have <laughs> basically, I've attracted enough to actually um, a full time job that actually is still training me. So I'll have um, accreditations after this, like um, some diplomas. And um, I have a big place. I used to keep attracting small little rooms that were in my own space, and now I've got a three bedroom. Like, I'm renting it on the own, to own it, but it's still my space. Um, outside of King Roy, so outside of the town I live in, so that I've got even a bigger space to, to be in. Um, so a lot of, I feel like a lot of things in my, in my life have changed. I don't think I'm ever going to feel worried about, even if I lose the job I get, like, I'm not going to feel worried about what's next. I was very worried about what's next, especially with money and with looking after myself. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I didn't feel very much like I could look after myself very well. And that changed. And that took, um, I remember, um, I remember grieving to sit about how bad I felt for about five to six hours a day um, for about four or five weeks. Um, maybe a little bit less, maybe about four. So it was a lot of, uh, I felt like a, whenever you're processing, it always feels like a long time and a short time at the same time. Time again, it kind of gets mixed up. Um, all I know is I felt like a long stint in a very short time and then everything, everything kind of just changes really easily. And uh, that's what happens for me. As I have a lot of things, if I look back in my life, I can, I can remember them, but I haven't, I haven't thought about them in ages. So, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so just if we go back a bit... Um, Initially, you were sceptical whether or not your, your dad was Jesus, but it didn't really bother you that much. No, it didn't really bother me that much. Um, dad didn't really put any, still doesn't, uh, to anyone that I know, doesn't really put any expectation on anyone that they believe he is Jesus. There's no, um, there's, there's no expectation to anyone who lives and listens to him but that believe in Jesus. It is, a, um, it is something, though, that if you want to get to know him personally, as a person... It's going to get in the way if you if you don't um, like if if you throw it out of hand and say well that's not a part of you I'm just going to treat you totally like that's not even a part of your life that's going to be very hard to be his friend because basically you're saying it's like saying you uh, Thomas um, you're not actually the Thomas you think you are you're only half of the Thomas you think you are and I'm only going to accept that half of you Thomas so it's like that doesn't usually work out very well um, and that's that's usually this is what happens with that dad too. Some people, some people try and get close to dad, but at the same time, throw it out of hand, totally out of hand. That even even if he feels his Jesus, he's completely, completely off his rocker. Um, not usually going to get you very close to who he actually is, and so that's the way it goes. But anyone like listening to his like um, listen to what he's saying um, and the truth that he's given out, don't have to believe his Jesus in the slightest. He doesn't give off that vibe at all. And um, most people that go to the that go to his talks will still say they don't believe in Jesus or don't don't even know. Um, yeah. What do you believe? I definitely believe in Jesus. Um, it was about six months after he first told me. Um, I did a lot of praying, I suppose. I don't. I didn't do a lot of processing. There wasn't. I wasn't very worried about him being Jesus. I wasn't scared or fearful or anything. So I, I didn't feel like that at all. I did a lot of thinking about what he was telling me about God and all the praying to to God. Um, it just comes to the point where one and one day where it, I, I felt he was Jesus. The uh, I didn't know who Jesus was. I I know what the Bible said about him. Um, I spent most of my life from as a Jehovah's Witness, as a young Jehovah's Witness, thinking that uh, I knew Jesus. But even then, like the Bible doesn't really tell much about his actual day-to-day personality. I didn't really know what being Jesus might mean, even. So, um, so when I say that I believed he was Jesus, I, I believed. I believed I wanted to. I wanted to get to know him and find out who Jesus was, and. Um, and if he ever proved to me that uh, if anything ever came up where I felt okay, obviously he's not Jesus, then I didn't feel upset about that. Even now, like if 
he said next day, oh, actually, it's all, I was all wrong. Um, I don't, I don't actually, I'm not actually Jesus. I wouldn't be that upset. Um, I'd feel a little bit weirded out because um, I'm pretty sure he is Jesus. Like, I, I think I'd be stuck believing that he thinks he's wrong. Um, but um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't actually change me from what I'm doing and what I want to do and, and how close I want to get to God. Um, there isn't, for me, a um, personal investment in Dad being Jesus for me to be doing what I'm doing. Um, and I don't think there ever will be. So. <laughs> um, so was there a sense of loss from, you know, you had, you grew up with your father figure and then you have somebody that's saying, actual fact, I'm a little bit different? More again. <laughs> um, I feel closer to my dad now than I've ever had in my life before. Um, he, getting close to, to God, God has become more of my father and mother figure than, than anything else. Um, and that's just been a, a gradual progression in what I've been doing. So for me, um, losing dad as a fa- father figure is, is, has not been such a big deal. He's become more like a brother to me than anything else, like a big brother who knows a whole lot more and someone I can listen to and definitely um, if he says something, I'm going to, I'm going to probably going to listen to it and give it a bit of credence. Um, but my relationship with him now has, is far more healthy and far more um, close than I've ever had with my dad. And it's, it's, been, um, it's been wonderful to have. I feel like um, I've gotten to know, I've actually gotten to know the man rather than to rely on the man. Does that make sense? Um, and then you get closer to, to him. And um, that's been really good. Um, I, it's one of the best things of, of, about my time um, with him is, is just how close we've gotten together. Yeah. And um, they don't see that, even they ever see that dissipating. Yeah. Excellent. Right, sir? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, can you explain to me your relationship with Mary and what she means to you? Mary, because I've already gone through some of it, to me, Mary is the other part of bad. Um, she's not my mum. I used to I used to poke fun at her and say, I'll call you, I'll call you mum for other people because I used to bugger her a bit. Um, but she's always been... Um, even when I first met her and she was and she was a bit skeptical like very skeptical about being dad's soulmate. She and I always got on well. So she was willing to talk to me about what was going on and how and how things were gone for her and why she was was skeptical on how she felt and how how afraid she got sometimes. Like she talked to me a few times about that kind of thing and I always always was okay with Mary. Um, but to me she's just the other part of dad. Um, they are together in every sense of the word in my head. Um, there is no... If I'm talking to Mary, I'm talking to Dad, basically. So um, Mary is often the one that sends me emails because Dad's busy usually doing something else. And it's always, to me, like talking to both of them. Like, and if Dad's talking to me, it's the same deal. Like, I'm talking to both of them. Um, there are different points at the, mo- at the moment that have been, and have been in the past, and, but that doesn't mean... It just means that I'm talking to different parts of that yeah. um, it hasn't been that much of a big deal I'm not worried <laughs> I've never been worried I'm, uh, I've never had an issue with Mary and as far as I know she hasn't had an issue with me so yeah. and do you believe she's I know what you're going to say but do, 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 do you believe that she's Mary Magdalene yes the same deal though um, I don't know anything about the 2000 years they've had in the spirit world um I don't know the snips and snaps of what they've given me, but I have no clear picture of what it's been like for them and what they've gone through. And the people they are, compared to the people that I've heard about in the Bible and the, and some of the first century stuff that they've talked about to me and to others on, on their DVDs. Um, so I'm getting to know them as people, um, apart from from what I already know. So um, not 
taking in any knowledge that I've known before and, and saying, that's the way you have to be, Mary. That's the way you have to be, um, Jesus. This is, this is the way you have to be. Um, going about that way, I, I, I don't see it as very logical. If, if, you, if they've spent so long in this very world and have grown so much, I can't expect... <laughs> I can't expect anyone to spend 2,000 years without growing even a little and changing even a little. And um, so I can't expect that of them either. And getting to know them as, as, as who they are. I definitely believe that um, Mary Luck is Mary Magdalene. Um, and uh, I, I don't... Um, any of the, the people that are, that are reincarnated, I don't envy them, um, them coming back. Like, from what I've seen of it, it's... In the arts, um, especially going through some of the feelings that they've had, like they've had rough. Dad and Mary have had, had some rough things happen to them in the first century. Dad hasn't been too worried about because he was one with God, but um, it's still pretty, it's pretty rough stuff that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Um, and I, I can't see, uh, yeah, any anyone reincarnated. I will tip my hat to them. <laughs> Because uh, this is a pretty harsh choice, especially if you had a harsh life in the first century. So why do you think they chose to come back now? Love. <laughs> the, the reason that they give love. Um, there's no other reason or why I would say that if, if reincarnation is not to, to rehash over old injuries, if it's not to do that kind of thing, there'd be no other reason than to just wanting to change things in, 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 the, in the place you're going to. If you're going to take a step back, if you're going to go to a place, um, let's say you go to a war-torn country, the only reason why you would you would do that would would be to to try and help them in some, in some way, or some, some way that you can. There's no other point. Um, if you go there to to really cure them, the, it won't usually won't go off well. <laughs> and the uh, and you're putting yourself in a place where it's far less comfortable for you too. Right? There wouldn't be any other reason than than to actually do doing something loving for the people that you go on that are in that space. Am I making sense? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I mumble sometimes. Absolutely. Is it alright? Yeah, it's absolutely fun. Okay, great. Yeah. Um. Sorted. Yeah, good man. Good to go. Yeah. Um. So was it tough growing up with Jesus being your dad? Growing from what age? Well, I guess when you found out, really. Um, what did your friends and family think of it? Uh, family. Um, Caleb, uh, my brother, younger brother, uh, he he kind of believed at the start himself, um, but since has has kind of go, uh, dad's off his rocker. Um, but he and I still go on okay. Um, Mum, she doesn't really want anything to do with dad or, or anything like that so that's okay with her and she and I have got our own stuff like working through our own uh, issues with each other so it that doesn't really come into it it doesn't even get brought up um, all my friends know usually pretty quickly um, just because it's a big part of my life um, not dad being Jesus but the whole like, praying to God processing emotions it's a big part of my life they, need, they usually know the whole story within a week or two. Um, I always go, whenever I go into a new job, I always make sure they know beforehand, um, before they, they, cho- they choose. I usually, at the end of an interview, go, okay, this is something that you need to know before you, you take me in. So all my bosses have known um, exactly what uh, my dad being Jesus and what that's probably going to entail. Um, it hasn't been that much of a problem. People who usually have a problem with it just don't stick around. And people who usually have a problem with it, I don't have a problem with them not sticking around. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not angry, like, I can understand how it might be weird. That's fine. <laughs> um, I usually give people a choice and before they get invested or anything. They can have a choice whether they want to stick with me or not. Um, most people that do, like, pretty calm. I've got a lot of friends who who don't give a crap about Jesus or religion or or God or anything like that. Um, and they understand my own issue, my own stuff, and they're still willing to treat me like a normal person. <laughs> and um, 
I've got some other friends who um, who do do some of um, so, like some of the stuff I'm doing, like Kenny to go and some of them uh, treat me okay. The other ones um, still treat me with a bit of fear or a little bit of awe. I'm going no, no, don't need to do that. <laughs> so often they they don't they're not usually good friends until and until they get through their own stuff about what's going on. Um, it's just it's just easy if I just tell everyone outright beforehand. Um, I have, like the girlfriends that I've had, I've always made sure they're known beforehand, um, before any, any kind of romantic kind of pops up, and I usually tell them, look, this is what my life is like, do you have a problem with it? Most of them say no, and it hasn't really affected the relationship. Other things have affected the relationships, but, uh, but that, that, that doesn't usually, yeah. So for me, it's been pretty, pretty simple, yeah. Um, most people will understand that that I'm a little bit, not weird, but um, like I said, I'm, I, I act childlike and I I just go with my feelings whole whole, especially when I'm happy and feeling connected. And like, I just go with my feelings and everything works out amazingly fine. And people are used to that and they, um, they understand they have no expectations of them believing anything, doing anything, processing anything. Um, all they care about is if they're gonna treat me like in a, in a nice way and uh, and of course that I'm treating them in, in, a, in a loving way in myself yeah. if I'm not treating them nicely they will I like them to tell me <laughs> while it's happening and um, so far no one's told me anything but so how did it feel when um, it was claimed that divine truth was a cult <laughs> I was expecting it as soon as uh, we were sitting at, at Dad's, um, like, in Dad's lounge, he was telling me about all this, all this stuff, and then I realised um, that he was going to have to tell, he was going to have to teach. Um, like I could, like I already knew as he was telling me, like we already knew that his whole passion is to teach this stuff. So I knew from that point on was that somehow media is going to come in, and a lot of people are going to say it's cold. I often joked that he that he was the Antichrist and that I was the son of the Antichrist. A lot of fun. I have a nice black sense of humour. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's um, I kind of knew it was it was coming. So it wasn't wasn't I kind of have a laugh about it usually. Like the whole compound thing, it's just it's over the top. I, <laughs> there there's no compound. <laughs> Um, there is no rituals of whatsoever. Um, nothing's expected of anybody. People can go off and process, or go off and connect to God, or go off and do whatever they want. There's no, there's no expectations. There's no, there's no people checking up on you. <laughs> um, it's not a religious order in the slightest. Um, people who meet together are usually um, because they want to meet together for some reason. Um, it's never organised apart from um, dance seminars. Like even that, like people can come and go as they please. There's no list. There's no names on the on a, in a book or anything. It's just come if you want to hear something. Um, so it's yeah. It, it just doesn't click. Like if if people want to call it a cult, that's fine. It's. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone, everyone who is involved with this stuff knows that someone was going to say that anyway. Um, but it's probably the most easygoing cult that I've ever been in, so that, that I've ever known of, so I haven't been in many cults. So. Um, but if it is a cult, it's pretty easygoing. <laughs> People are happy or sad or, or processing fear or doing whatever they, they want, and people are just people, so... Um, <laughs> this this is um yeah <laughs> the cult just doesn't quite suit suit it. I don't know if there's a special meaning to a cult that suits uh, suits what Dad's doing then we'll use that. But <laughs> at the moment, it's just a belief system belief system that you can take on or or not take on as you want. And what would you say to um, <clears throat> the reports that? Divine truth breaks up marriages. <laughs> I seriously, um, I've seen so many people who have nothing to do with with divine love. As soon as they're honest with their partners, the marriage breaks up. 
as soon as they start acting on their own happiness, the marriage breaks up and no one says anything. <laughs> Basically, like, if you're going to connect to your own emotions and, and you're going to change, if you're going to change as a person, if the other person does not want to change, the marriage is going to break up. That's the way it's going to go. The fact is there's a lot of people who are holding on to relationships that don't actually want to be in relationships. They don't feel any love towards the other person. They don't feel any connection to the other person. They just feel some sort of fear or they feel the kids are involved and they need to stay for the kids or they it's comfortable or whatever the case. But they'll even, they'll even tell their friends that. They'll say, say it to people that they can trust. Um, Basically, if you're going to throw, if you're going to change as a person, some, something's always going to happen. Either the person changes with you, or they don't. And if a lot of times in relationships, someone wants to change and someone doesn't, they break up. Um, so in, in that instance, I can see why people would be worried about that. Um, but it's it's all personal. If if the relationship has a problem, it had a problem before. Divine love came into it and the slightest. Um, and if someone is really like being loving and, and connecting to God and, and His love, they're not going to break up a relationship for sheer spite. They're, ne- they're not going to break up a relationship um, out of anger. They're, go- they're going to try and talk about what's going on. They're going to try and want to con- love the other person, even if they. Uh, even if they don't want to be in a relationship with the person, they're going to try and actually treat the person lovingly, at least. Even if that is, I don't love you, I can't be with you, and 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 have this crappy relationship going on, because hurting me, you, and maybe our kids too, I need to go. Or sometimes it's just, they just want to talk about what's going on. But um, yeah, I... <laughs> saying that divine love breaks up marriages is it's just not looking at anything else in the marriage unfortunately um I still have friends who've got nothing to do with the other path and they've broken up they've broken up relationships and it's just been because they wanted to be happy because they were sad before and afterwards they felt happy <laughs> and that happens yeah. and unfortunately people do break up relationships for bad reasons but um that's all on what happens with the people it's nothing to do about divine love so, <clears throat> right, mate. Oh, okay, mate. Yeah, it's probably up. <clears throat> so, divine truth believes in soulmates. Yes. Um, if you've listened to any of Dan's stuff, or if you haven't, I'll explain it. Um, basically, we're all um, when we're first incarnated, um, we're, we start off as a whole soul. Um, we split up into into our half souls, and then are incarnated with a spirit body and a physical body. So, soul, spirit physical all put together Um, if it's mostly masculine uh, you'll be usually a a male body connecting to the soul and if it's a feminine soul a female body connecting to the soul Um, you can have two halves that are are masculine like the whole soul is very masculine so two halves would be masculine there can be a gay soul so male male soulmates or very feminine soul altogether female female soulmates so yes Um, basically it's the other half of who you really are. If you if you think of soul, if you think of your soul as who you really are, that's the other half of who you really are. And later on, um, I've never experienced this, so I, I don't know what it's like or anything like that. But apparently, later on, you, you connect to the spirit. And Dad said that he's has done that, and I've not seen it happen. Um, I I don't know how it would feel like, but I do believe that that there's a a big faith in me that that's that can occur and I'd like that to occur for me and everyone else yeah. so do you think you found your soulmate? yeah I, I found my soulmate <laughs> um, she's yeah I, I don't know as much, how, how much I, what I can say about her to, to, to me at the moment she um, she uh, doesn't want to be with me in a uh, in a healthy way so uh, she still believes it's okay to be angry at me at any single point in time that she wants to. Um, and I have yet to go through emotions of where I, I stand firm, um, where that's not allowed anymore. So I've actually extra, extra, I can't even say the word, I've actually cut myself 
from that relationship at the moment until I can work it out, be in a place where I can be loving to myself and to her at the same time. At the moment, I can't be. I put myself in a space where um, I become servile. Uh, servile, I suppose, is the word. Um, not really a great place to be if you want to be two halves of the same person. Basically, you're saying that one's the master and one's the servant, and that doesn't work out very well. Um, if you look at how God looks at it, He created you as as as, as a whole soul. Um, trying to have the, the the control over the other half is it's like trying half of your brain trying to have control of the other half of your brain and smashing it down a bit it, it doesn't it doesn't go well you want to be half a person <laughs> so are you worried in any way that you won't end up being together with your soulmate yeah uh, I, I've had to process through feelings that um, I, I, I do have the, the feeling that no matter what happens um, sooner or later her and I will, will be together I've had to process a bit of grief that that might not happen for very many years maybe not in this, in this lifetime it might be happen, happen in the spirit world um, and so I've been quite sad about that I had a big cry about that a, few, a week or so ago about the fact is I might not have kids because I don't want to have kids with anyone else, um, and I'm not coming. If things don't change, um, I'm not going to get the chance with her either. And so that really upset me because I really love kids. That's that's the reason why I do my, my job as a youth worker. Um, so I definitely have those feelings, and but I don't see them as um, as real. I see them as fears or things that I need to get through. And once I do, like things will change. That's always been the way with whatever I've done. Once I get through the emotion of whatever it is, things change. And you, and always for the better. So um, at the moment, I don't have the faith in, in that. I don't have the faith that things would get better for me and my soulmate. Um, but in the back of my mind, there's always this thing of like, once I get through this, something will change. I might even just get that, that faith back. But I just let myself feel whatever I feel at that point in time. At that point in time, at this point in time, I, I have no clue whether we're going to be together. I have no clue what I'm going to do if we're not. Because I'm so sure that she's my soulmate that, that I can't have anyone else. Um, I can't get into a relationship with someone where I know before. I, I feel so sure beforehand that we have no future together. Um... I can't do that to anyone um, just so that I don't feel lonely or just so that I get to have kids or just so I can't do that to any, to anyone or to myself like it's just but that could be quite a lonely life for you then couldn't it well <laughs> funnily enough I've <laughs> if I'm treating myself uh, lovingly um, I feel better about that than being in a relationship does that make sense um, being in a relationship and and, and feeling bad. Um, I prefer to look after myself than go into a relationship where I know I'm not going to look after myself. Even if that means, yeah, it, I might not get in a relationship ever again. Um, again, the loneliness is just an, just an emotion. I don't particularly feel too lonely at the moment. Um, if, I, if it does come up, then I'll process it. I know there's some probably some loneliness in there because I'm attracting being alone. So obviously something's there, but um, but I'm not worried about it at the moment. It's not Loneliness is not something that I've ever been freaked out about. Um, I've always been more freaked out about lots of people because then there's lots of different expectations coming at me and because I'm the kind of person that wants to give in to all of them, um, that freaks me out more than anything else. Being lonely is easier. Um, so I often put myself in situations like coming down here to the Sunshine Coast so there are lots of people around me so I can feel what's happening rather than run away from it it's hard because I, I still want to run away from some of the emotions that are, that are in me so do you think it puts pressure on her in the context that you're her soulmate and if you're not together then you might never be with anybody else. 
Um, I try not to put pressure on her in the slightest. Um, I've, I've told her, and this is, this is the same deal for anyone, if she wants to go the way she wants to go, then she needs to make a choice. Like Make the choice to go that way. Don't sit on the fence trying to be someone that she, that she doesn't think she is for me. Um, because that, that, that won't ever work. That won't ever be something. She might as well just be totally herself. And if she gets to that point where she is totally herself, I have a, I have a very big belief that she'll, she'll be with me. But even if she doesn't at the moment, as long as she get, gets to that point, she'll be happy. Like, no matter what happens, whether it's me or someone else, like, she'll be happy. At the moment, even talking to me doesn't make her happy. <laughs> so... I prefer her not to be around me at that point. Does that make sense? Um, I don't ever want to put expectations on on my soulmate that she has to be with me when she has chosen not to. Um, that's not loving in the slightest, and that's not the kind of relationship I ever want. Where just because we're in a relationship, there is some sort of expectation on her behaviour. That's what she's put me through, and I and I don't want to ever put her through that. That's just not the kind of thing I want. Yeah. it's very easy for me like, if she's my soulmate um, I will attract her as soon as I like, things will, like I said I'll tra- things will change when I go through my own stuff I'll attract her again if she's not I'll find out but uh, I'm my... it, it's, it's hard being this sure of something um, and not being able to give any any, any solid evidence um Unless, unless you're that sure yourself. Um, for me, I can, you, get, you can get to a point where you can actually feel someone else uh, and, and what's going on for them just because you don't have any blocks to it. And with your soulmate, if you have no blocks to them, you can feel it even more intensely. For me, she is my soulmate. I know it in every part of me. To say that she's not my soulmate is to say that I'm not me. That's 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 how intrinsic it gets, how deep it gets. Um, she she is a, a like a, if your mind was a puzzle, she is like a large a half of that puzzle. She she is she. <laughs> who she is, is 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 there for me at the moment her choices of how she treats me are not part of who she really is but she wants to hold on to them as who she really is so that's the reason why we can't be together but um but that doesn't change any facts for me i don't have to be with her for her to be my something so what was that um, for me it's there's there's no prerequisite for that I know who she is, I know who I am, and the more I deal with my emotions, the more I know who I am, the more real I am every day and day, day to day, and the more happier I get. Um, and if she sees that, then maybe she'll do the same thing, maybe she won't, that's up to her. Is there anything worrying about divine truth? Yeah. There's a word of warning for it. Um, if you're going into it to try and every- change everything around you and people around you and trying to um, be comfortable with everything around you, you're not going to, it's not going to work. Um, you're going to come to blocks pretty quickly and you're going to feel pretty horrible. There's, there's, uh, if you're not honest about what your emotions really are, you can get stuck pretty badly. Like the fact that I don't actually want to ever feel that I'm angry I, I could be, I've been stuck for quite some time and it feels pretty horrible at that point um, so un, unless you're really willing um, to change as a person unless you're really willing to, to see that in your life and wanting that I, the, there, is, there is a chance it's not going to feel so good I would suggest probably not doing it at that point <laughs> saying that though like in this like for the divine life path, like it for me, it is connecting to God in a personal way that has nothing to do with anybody else. Um, the whole emotions, the whole soulmates, everything else is just what comes with it. It's just 
it's like a wave of information that just comes with you and it just hits you and you absorb it and it's great as long as you're connected to God in a way that that's purely emotional things will work out and they work out really well and anyone can have a relationship with God they don't need Jesus right? it's just telling you that you can they don't need religion they don't need um, a group of people telling them they just need the will the desire and the honesty to just talk to God like um if there's anything I can say just um talk to God as if you're his, his your mother or your father that you wanted to have and start feeling whatever you feel back like whatever you can feel back and start trusting that a bit and and try to have a dialogue it would be the best thing you could ever do Excellent. Cut. Right. We've got to...